Now let me come on to this. So we discussed about portfolio risk and return. Uh, the first part. Now this is second part. Can we take a break? <laughs> so for five minutes. Ah, sorry, like a two minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, so what we do, what we do. Uh, let me take a short break. So let us be back by 4.52, everyone. Okay. I hope everyone is back. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, great. So now let me see. So what we have seen that if we combine the two risky assets, if we combine the two risky assets, so we get what? We get efficient frontier. So this is called efficient frontier because this is a frontier which is on the basis of efficient portfolios. Okay. So this is efficient frontier. Now what happens if we combine a risky security and a risk-free security? A risky security and a risk-free security. So logically think if we invest our money into risky security, risk-free security, then risk would be zero. If I invest 100% of my money into risk-free security, then what will happen? My return would be equal to risk-free return. My risk would be zero. So you can see if I put my, if I create a portfolio where I am putting 100% of my money into risk-free uh, risk-free security. So my return is equivalent to risk-free return. And again, you can see what is the standard deviation. Standard deviation is here on the x-axis. So standard deviation will be zero only. So if I put 100% of my money, it is this. If I put my 100% of money in the risky portfolio, risky asset or risky portfolio, then what will happen? Logically, so risky asset and risky portfolio are two different things. Huh? Huh. It can be, yes, risky asset and risky portfolio are generally two different things. But here, what we can do, we can combine a risky portfolio with a risk-free asset also. And we can combine a risky asset with a risk-free uh, asset also. So both, in both cases, whether it is risk-free asset or whether it is uh, whether it is a risky asset or risky portfolio, the result would be same. If I talk about this scenario, the result would be same. If we invest 100% of my money into the risky asset or risky portfolio, then the return, the total return would be equi equal to risky asset return or risky portfolio return. Are you getting the point? So here you can consider risky asset as only one security also, or you can consider it as a complete portfolio also, where the money is invested into risky securities only. Is it fine? Shana, if we invest 100% in our risky, uh, risk free asset, then the return is that risk free return. Logically think, dekhi, agar main bolta hon, what is my portfolio return formula? This is also a portfolio. This is weightage of uh, weightage of X into standard uh, return of X plus weightage of Y into return of Y. Ya fir hum isko kis tarikhe se likh sakte hain? Hum bol sakte hain. 
वेटेज ऑफ रिस्क फ्री इन टू रिटर्न ऑफ रिस्क फ्री प्लस वेटेज ऑफ रिस्की इन टू रिटर्न ऑफ रिस्की तो लॉजिकली सोचिए इफ आई एम पुटिंग हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ माई मनी इन टू रिस्क फ्री तो क्या होगा ये तो मेरा जीरो ही हो जाएगा तो माई रिटर्न विल बी इक्वल टू रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न ओनली आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट ओके इन द सेम मैनर इफ आई पुट हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ माई मनी इन टू रिस्क वन सो वट विल है it will become zero because weightage would be zero so whatsoever is the return on risky one exactly the same will be my return only are you getting the point so difference will be where when it is not 100% so if it is 50 50 40 50 like that so accordingly we can create my portfolio return on the basis of this formula siddhi is it fine सार्थक इज इट क्लियर ओके ओके ग्रेट नाउ नाउ इफ वी टॉक अबाउट पोर्टफोलियो रिस्क so now if i talk about what portfolio risk so i am just explaining it to you and then two three next slides you can easily understand so what is my portfolio risk formula that is weightage of a into standard deviation of a square if there are two assets then weightage of b square into standard deviation of b square Plus two into weightage A, weightage B, standard deviation A, standard deviation B, and then correlation A B. Do you remember this? This is portfolio standard deviation. Or if we remove it, it becomes what? It becomes portfolio variance. Is it? Is it clear? I hope this equation is clear to everyone. is it is it fine yes okay now now logically see if i change it to risky and risk free let i say weightage of risky into standard deviation of risky weightage of risk free into standard deviation of risk free weightage of risky weightage of risk free standard deviation of risky standard deviation of risk free and correlation between risky and risk free can i rewrite this equation like this yes now logically think what will happen if i put 100% of my money if i put 100% of my money into risk free so what will happen it will become zero it will also become zero and in case of risk free the standard deviation of risk free is zero so what will be the standard deviation in this case it will be zero only is this point clear is it fine yes okay now now if i put 100% of my money into risky logically think what will happen this will become zero 
this will also become zero because if i put weightage of risk free to be zero the whole equation will become zero so what is the portfolio risk of risky what is the portfolio risk of risky uh, so it is equal to the risk of risky only logically dekhiye what i will be left with this has become zero this has become zero so only this is left so logically think this is 100% 100% return of risky one is my portfolio risk to jo bhi mera risky asset ka risk tha wo hi mera portfolio ka risk ban jayega kya ye point clear hota hai is it fine please is it clear yes sir yes sir okay now let us say 60% is in a and 40% is in b uh, 50% is in risky 40% is in risk free now let us see there will be some number it will become what zero because standard deviation of risk free is zero okay and again here what will happen it will become what it will become zero because risk free return is zero and we cannot establish any correlation between risky and risk free so it is zero so actually what will happen my i can say if i combine a risk free asset with a risky asset so can i say it depends upon that how much we are so actually what we will be left with we will be left with only this and if we remove this square if we want to talk about the standard deviation so what it we are left with we are left with this is weightage of risky into standard deviation of risky only is this point clear so if we combine a risk free asset and a risky asset so actually my portfolio standard deviation is what simply weightage of risky into standard deviation of risky because rest of the equation will become zero is this point clear so logically think what happens as i increase the weightage jaise jaise main is weight ko increase karta jaunga वैसे वैसे मेरा स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन बढ़ता जाएगा जैसे जैसे मैं इस वेट को कम करता जाऊंगा तो मेरा स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन कम होता जाएगा एंड यू कैन सी हियर द सेम थिंग इज हैपनिंग यू कैन सी हियर एज आई एम इंक्रीजिंग हाँ हाँ बोलिए वेट एज इन अगर आप रिस्की एसेट का अगर वेट बढ़ाते जाओगे तो स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन हाँ तो इसका मतलब स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन 50 था वो तो हर केस में 50 रहेगा रिस्की का लेकिन मैंने सिर्फ उसमें 30 परसेंट पैसा इन्वेस्ट किया है तो 70 परसेंट के ऊपर तो कोई रिस्क है नहीं क्योंकि वो तो रिस्क फ्री में चला गया तो सिर्फ 30 परसेंट जो पैसा इन्वेस्ट किया है उसी पर तो 50 का स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन है ना तो जैसे जैसे मैं अपना वेटेज बढ़ाता जाऊंगा देखते चलिए तो वैसे वैसे फिफ्टी का फोर्टी परसेंट हमें लेना होगा फिफ्टी का फिफ्टी परसेंट फिफ्टी का सिक्सटी परसेंट तो वैसे वैसे मेरा रिस्क भी बढ़ता जा रहा है ना तो और अगर मैं पूरा हंड्रेड परसेंट लगा देता हूं तो फिफ्टी इसका मतलब पूरा का पूरा जितना रिस्की के ऊपर क्या था रिस्क था वो पूरा का पूरा रिस्क पूरा का पूरा स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन मेरे पोर्टफोलियो के ऊपर आई हैव अ डाउट आप बोल रहे हो अभी सपोजिंग When you, when you you have written your 60, 40 risk and risk free, that is 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 60% allocated to risk. Wo weightage hai, wo allocation hai. Matlab, no, weightage hai, no? weightage hai. this is weightage. So yes. then how are you getting 50% your this this one this one standard deviation this is assumption I am saying for Achha, example assumption. Assumption. the the standard deviation of risky instrument is 50% okay this is assumption these are the weights these are the weights and this is standard deviation of risky one so if i change my weight if i put more and more money into risky my portfolio will increase and logically think it is this is not playing any role this is zero this is not playing any role this is zero so can we say that there is a linear relationship 
जितना ज्यादा मैं रिस्की इन्वेस्टमेंट्स में पैसा डालता जाऊंगा उतना ही रिस्क मेरा बढ़ता जा रहा है क्योंकि यहां पर कोरिलेशन का को कोई इंपैक्ट नहीं आ रहा कुछ भी नहीं आ रहा सो देयर इज द लीनियर रिलेशनशिप एज सिंपल एज दैट सो यू कैन सी हियर सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग देयर इज अ लीनियर इक्वेशन यू कैन सी अ स्ट्रेट लाइन सो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इफ आई एम पुटिंग 100% मनी इनटू रिस्क फ्री इट इज जीरो एज आई एम पुटिंग गिविंग मोर एंड मोर वेटेज टू द रिस्की वन वैसे वैसे करके मेरा स्टैंडर्ड एविशन क्या होता जा रहा है बढ़ता जा रहा है ना एंड यू कैन सी देयर how we are calculating the portfolio standard deviation the formula is same lekin risk free zero ho gaya 2 into weightage of a weightage of b that thing has become zero so ultimately we can say we can simply find out the portfolio risk by this is this point clear i hope this point is clear to everyone theek hai अब जब हम लोगों ने व्हेन वी कंबाइंड द टू रिस्की एसेट्स व्हेन वी कंबाइंड द टू रिस्की एसेट्स माय लाइन वाज लाइक दिस इट वाज नॉन लीनियर बिकॉज कोरिलेशन वाज प्लेइंग रोल हेयर माय रिस्क डिपेंड्स अपॉन टू थिंग्स ओनली वन इज हाउ मच परसेंटेज ऑफ माय पोर्टफोलियो वी आर पुटिंग इन द रिस्की वन एंड वट इज द रिस्क of the risky that's it no correlation nothing else so that is why it is a straight line so here we have straight line when we are when we combine two risky assets we have low non linear relationship when we combine one risky and one risk free we have what kind of relationship we have basically uh, you can say linear kind of relationship i hope this is fine if we have two risk free then there is no relation then there is non linear relationship non linear no, if you have two risk free assets in our portfolio so if two risk free it means they are exactly same when we talk about risk free risk free doesn't means fd or like that risk free means generally government securities so when i am taking government securities so this is only one asset this is not two asset different different risk free so there can when we talk about risk free assets either there can be we can say uh, it means us securities generally we say so they are risk because they have risk they they don't have any risk so my risk would be zero only okay now now let me move so you can see see when i combine for example i have created my portfolio i have created my portfolio and if i combine that portfolio with the risk free asset so i get what capital allocation line which we did in the last class if i combine a market portfolio which market is we are talking about with a risk free asset we get what we get capital market line we get what capital market line so what is a market post post for the etf market in where the risky asset is the market portfolio so we can say index kind of thing so if we have index kind of thing if we are talking about on an average from the universe what market is holding so that is market portfolio we are saying so we get what capital market line so that particular point where this capital market line is tangent to the efficient frontier see efficient frontier we created from what by combining the different different risky assets we got the efficient frontier and once we have the different different combinations if we combine that combination with the risk free asset i get different different lines i get different different lines like this so that particular line which is tangent to this tangent to this efficient frontier so that line which is tangent 
to this efficient frontier that point the point where it is tangent we call it as optimal risky portfolio we know that this is the efficient frontier all the points on this efficient frontier are efficient but question is out of all these efficient portfolios which is the most efficient one which is the optimal portfolio the point the 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 portfolio which is giving me the highest risk premium for a same level of risk or we can say the point where the sharp ratio is highest so if i combine these portfolios these risky portfolios with a risk free asset so i get what different different lines i get so that particular point where it is tangent so we can say that we should invest like this so this is the optimal portfolio it means this portfolio gives me the same level of high risk the same level of it gives me the highest risk premium for the same level of risk to ye mujhe jo sharp ratio hai is point par highest sharp ratio yahan par hogi so how can we calculate the portfolio return so this equation you have to learn so how can we calculate the portfolio uh, return uh, yes so capital market line like the diagram and all this is the same as a capital allocation right? uh, there's no difference between cm and uh, only the difference is that that when we talk about capital asset uh, capital allocation line so we are combining a portfolio of risky assets here we are talking about market portfolio so when we combine the market portfolio with the risk free we get capital market line when we combine a portfolio of risky assets which is not market portfolio so we get a line that is called capital allocation line only that is the difference so when we we are combining market portfolio with the risk free we get capital market line when we combine the portfolio which we have created with the risk free so we get what capital allocation line shane is it fine yes okay so how can we calculate the expected portfolio return so this equation you have to learn so this is the risk free return rm minus rf this is market risk premium and then i have to divide it with the market standard deviation and i have to multiply it with the portfolio standard deviation so risk free we can say rm minus rf this is market risk premium and then i have to divide it with the multiply it with the portfolio standard deviation and divide with the market standard deviation okay so again it is this so this entire bracketed part is divided by what this uh, it means in multiplication you can write down so this market uh, risk premium is multiplied by the portfolio standard deviation and divided with the market standard deviation yahan pe to expected uh, wo diya hua hai expected uh, return of market theek okay. hai when we are talking about expected so you can write down e also बट जनरली मैं आपको वैसे बता रहा हूँ तो मार्केट रिटर्न है तो आप ई ले लीजिए अगर मैं यहाँ पर मुझे इसकी बात कर ले स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ पोर्टफोलियो डिवाइडेड बाय स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ मार्केट इज इक्वल टू बीटा नो स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ पोर्टफोलियो डिवाइड बाय स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ मार्केट जस्ट अ मिनट I think I think is... so. This formula is of Capum, so I thought that uh, standard deviation. No Capum. Of... <laughs> yes, yes. You can say you can say that this is related to Capum only. Yes. So if we talk about beta, for example, so what is that beta? So let me try to derive it. 
let me try to derive it so there might be a possibility so what is beta beta is covariance of xm divided by uh, this variance of market okay then if i instead of this covariance what i can write down i can write down standard deviation of market standard deviation of we can say x and this is correlation between x and so this is standard deviation m standard deviation m so one m is gone and if correlation we are establishing we are saying correlation is for example if we are assuming the correlation to be one then definitely we can say this is beta are you getting the point see yes so if we say this is one correlation is one market uh, and the portfolio have same kind of thing so if we are assuming it to be one so only this portion is left so definitely you can say this is kind of capm equation okay now 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 let me see now investors who believe market prices are informationally efficient they do passive investment but there can be certain people who says that we can earn more return by applying our own strategy we can earn more return so there might be a possibility that what happens we think that securities are highly undervalued and what we can do by borrowing some money if we invest in that so we will earn more return so that is basically we can say kind of active portfolio management so now if you look here what is happening this is what this is this point is what it means 100% of my money i am investing into risky asset 100% of my money i am investing into risky asset from here to here if i talk about what is happening here this is 0% investment in risky asset now if i move here so there is different different allocation so 25% in equity 75% in risk free okay 50% in risk free 50% in risky 60% in risk free 40% in risk free so like that we have different different combinations so this is 100% investment in risky one a uh, risk free one now you can see here after that again there is a line if there is an active portfolio management manager who believe that the security is highly undervalued and they can earn a profit so what they will do they will take the loan and invest in the portfolio they will take a loan and invest in the portfolio so for example they have 100 rupee so if they are putting 100 rupee this is whole money is invested into risky one but they feel they can take more risk to earn more return they think that the asset is highly undervalued so what for example they do they took they take loan of 25 also so what is the total portfolio now total portfolio is 125 
it means we are giving weightage of how much 125% to the risky one and minus 25% to the risk free one why minus 25% logically see we are taking loan so if we talk about this point to the right hand side we call them as borrowing portfolios because what is happening position is created by taking by borrowing and here we call it as lending portfolio because we are investing in risk free means we are lending when we invest in risk free asset so it means we lend we are giving money so that is why if if i talk about this point to the right hand side we call it as borrowing portfolio to the left hand side we call them as lending portfolio is this point clear now now again you know so can you go on the previous slide just now okay. yes yes done now now we know that there are two type of risk one is systematic one is unsystematic for example total risk we can measure the total risk through standard deviation now it can have two parts one is systematic one is unsystematic as the name says systematic risk is that risk which is because of whole system an individual's action cannot eliminate it so that kind of risk is systematic risk so for example high inflation low gdp higher taxes covid all these are examples of systematic risk unsystematic risk is that risk which is because of a specific situation it means by taking some appropriate action we can actually diversify or eliminate it so let us say there is a company which is using 40% debt in its capital structure and 60% equity in its capital structure 40% is debt and 60% is equity so it means this company is at risk now by reducing the debt component can the company reduce risk answer is yes and this risk is not to the whole system this risk is not to the whole you can say economy this risk is specific risk this is unique to this particular company only so we can eliminate by taking some appropriate action so we call it as firm specific risk unique risk or we can call it as diversifiable risk and this is non diversifiable this is non diversifiable and this is diversifiable is it the so when we talk about the portfolio management theory so what happens we believe that no one can eliminate this risk we cannot reduce or eliminate this risk but what we can do by creating a proper diversified portfolio we can eliminate this component of risk that is unsystematic risk so lower the level of correlation higher is that diversification benefit okay so this risk can be easily diversified by creating a diversified portfolio this risk can be reduced by taking by creating a diversified portfolio only this risk can be diversified we cannot diversify this risk this is systematic and unsystematic risk please
I hope this is clear. Okay, now. Now, there are different, different models through which we can find out the expected return. So how much return we should expect from a risky security, we can use different, different methods. So for example, first method is multi-factor model. So in this method, what happens? We look at different, different macroeconomic factors. And on the basis of different, different macroeconomic factors, we try to project the return for a risky asset. हम क्या करते हैं बहुत सारे अलग अलग जो फैक्टर्स होते हैं मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक फैक्टर्स होते हैं जीडीपी ग्रोथ रेट अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट इन्फ्लेशन कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल कंज्यूमर कॉन्फिडेंस तो इस तरीके के अलग अलग हम क्या करते हैं फैक्टर्स को देखते हैं एंड इफ वी एड वॉट रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न इन दैट सो आई गेट वॉट रिस्क रिक्वायर्ड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न सो हाउ मच रिटर्न वी शुड एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम अ सिक्योरिटी सो आई विल एक्सपेक्ट एटलीस्ट रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न plus beta into factor 1 plus beta into factor 2 beta means beta related to this factor only beta into factor 3 so there can be different different factors so this is called multi factor model so it gives me what it gives me required expected return now so beta is the sensitivity that factor yes there can be the simplest which is capm model basically so what does that capm model says that we can expect the return how that is risk free return there is only one factor that is the market risk premium so this is what this is capm model so here i was multiplying this beta with different different you can say macro macroeconomic factors here i am just multiplying it with one factor and that is market risk premium rm minus rf is market risk premium so we can call it as single factor model so can you repeat capm ka yes yes kya uh, cheez capm ka jo aapne samjhaya wo bas capital asset pricing model so what happens in this i am saying that as a rational investor well what return i will expect for example there is a security xyz how much return i should expect so i will say i should earn at least risk free return if i invest in this risky security that is xyz i should get at least risk free return plus because we are getting we are taking more risk so there should be some risk premium also there should be some risk premium also so this component is stock risk premium this is risk free return so question is how do we get the risk premium so i say can we calculate the market risk premium it means if anyone invest in this market market means index so on an average how much extra return we earn over the risk free return agar koi market mein maan lijiye mujhe indian markets mein invest karna hai to मैं किसी एक स्पेसिफिक सिक्योरिटी की बात नहीं कर रहा हूं मैं कहता हूं अगर मैंने इंडियन मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट किया इंडियन मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट करने का मतलब ब्रॉड इंडेक्स ले लीजिए कोई भी तो मुझे कितना एक्स्ट्रा रिटर्न मिलता है ऑन एन एवरेज रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न से सो लेट अस से मार्केट अर्न हाउ मच फिफ्टीन रिटर्न रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न इज सेवन तो कितना एडिशनल हम लोगों को मिलता है एट सो दैट इज मार्केट रिस्क प्रीमियम लेकिन मुझे तो स्टॉक का रिस्क प्रीमियम चाहिए सो इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई इट विद द बीटा बीटा क्या बताता है कितने टाइम्स 
if beta is 1.1 it means if market return is 10% then on an average i can on an average return on stock is 11% yahi to batata hai beta so if my risk premium is 8% market risk premium and beta is for example 1.1 so how much will be my stock risk premium that is 8.8 so if i risk free return is 7% for example if we add this so 15.8 this is the expected return, required rate of return on this stock kya ye point clear hota hai so basically jo beta hai That is for a particular stock which is multiplied with the market uh, return. हाँ क्योंकि मैंने निकाला था sensitivity कितनी है क्योंकि मुझे जो expected return निकालनी है वो तो एक stock की निकालनी है एक security की निकालनी है तो मुझे risk premium तो उस security का चाहिए ना उस security का risk premium निकालने के लिए मैंने कहा पहले market risk premium निकाला मैंने कहा market risk premium निकल गया लेकिन मुझे तो stock risk premium नहीं चाहिए so if i multiply the market risk premium with its sensitivity factor so what it will give me it will give me stock risk premium kya ye point clear hota hai shanay is it is it fine sure yes sir nandini is it done Nandini, is it done? Sarthak. Yes, sir. Siddhi. Yes, sir. Sharvil. Okay. So, again, if we talk about that single factor model, so we can have. a simplified form of that single factor model also and this simplified form of single index model is basically what market model so here what i am doing i am saying okay alpha this is a a means intercept on an average this much return we get so we वहां पर हम क्या कर रहे थे वी वर मल्टीप्लाइंग द मार्केट रिस्क प्रीमियम विद द बीटा हेयर आई एम मल्टीप्लाइंग मार्केट रिटर्न विद द बीटा एंड आई एम एडिंग एबनॉर्मल रिटर्न सो ऑन एन एवरेज इस एसेट पर कितना रिटर्न आता है सो इफ वी रिग्रेस If we do the regression, so वी गेट वी कैन गेट दिस एल्फा ऑल्सो वी कैन गेट दिस बीटा ऑल्सो वी कैन गेट दिस दिस फैक्टर ऑल्सो इट मीन एबनॉर्मल वी कैन से रेजिड्यूअल जो एडिशनल आ जाता है सो अगेन दिस दिस मार्केट मॉडल इज अ एग्जांपल ऑफ व्हाट सिंगल इंडेक्स मॉडल ओनली सो अल्फा हेयर इज इंटरसेप्ट सो वी कैन से इट इज काइंड ऑफ रिस्क फ्री रिटर्न प्लस वहां पर हम क्या करते थे आर एम माइनस आर एफ रिस्क प्रीमियम को ले लेते थे हम कहते हैं नहीं हम मार्केट रिटर्न मल्टीप्लाइड विद इट सेंसिटिविटी और जो एबनॉर्मल रिटर्न आने के चांसेस हैं दैट इज दिस सो दिस इज आल्सो अ सिंगल इंडेक्स मॉडल सिंगल फैक्टर मॉडल ना आई होप बीटा बीटा आप लोगों ने किया हुआ है पहले हम लोग बीटा पे बार बार डिस्कशन कर रहे हैं आई होप बीटा यू नो शन सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द स्टॉक मतलब किया हुआ है ना आप लोगों ने किया हुआ है इन विद सब्जेक्ट में आई थिंक इन 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 क्यूटी दैट इज क्वांटिटेटिव क्वांट्स एज ऑफ नाउ नहीं वी आर डूइंग लीनियर रिग्रेशन तो उसमें बीटा का बात आ गया ठीक है ठीक है तो देखना शुरू करते हैं द सेम थिंग वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड ऑल दो सो व्हाट बीटा टेल्स अस इट टेल्स अस हाउ अ स्टॉक or how a portfolio moves in tandem with the market movement so for example if beta is 1.2 what does it represents that if on an average there is a 10% movement in the market then 
movement in the stock is approximately 12%. If beta is for example 0.8, what do we mean by it? If there is a movement in the market on average for example for 5%, so it measures the sensitivity of a stock or portfolio with the market. So that is basically what that is beta, as simple as that. Okay. So how can we calculate? Sure. Beta won't it mean that like supposing in the earlier single factor model we had an equation where alpha i plus beta i r m plus e i. Mm -hmm. So, usme if we get a beta of 8%, so would the interpretation be with one unit change of your risk of free asset, there's an 8% change in the overall return. That is the interpretation. Right? No, no, no. Not with risk-free asset. It means if mm -hmm. not with risk-free asset. It is not connected with risk-free asset. No. Beta is connected with the market movement. Or that fact market movement we are taking market as an independent factor so for example if we take gdp when we talk about multi factor model so if you remember we multiplied beta into factor 1 factor 2 is tarike se kiya tha so when we do this so it means we are measuring the sensitivity of the company the sensitivity of the price is with the GDP movement. Ah, correct. So exactly. So if there is, if we get a beta of 8%, so the interpretation will be enough beta, that 1% beta, change in no, GDP no, no. causes beta, a 8% change in that company. Uh, beta, beta cannot be in percentage. Beta is never in percentage. Nein, percentage example. Whatever value. Uh, whatever value, it means that much times. Ah, one unit change in GDP causes 8%. Uh, uh, if beta is eight, in that company. if beta is eight, we can say if GDP changes by one, then uh, then the return is eight. Yes. Okay. So how can we do it? So beta can be calculated as covariance. So covariance is a tool which tells us how two data sets are moving together on an average, whether they are moving in the same direction or the opposite direction. So we get covariance. So if covariance is positive, it means positive relationship. It means they are moving in the same direction. If covariance is negative, it means they are moving in the opposite direction. So we have covariance divided by variance of market. So if we change the same thing we did, so I can, can change the woman a little bit. Yes. Is it fine? Yes. Siddhi, are the things clear? Yes, sir. Then now, if we plot, if we plot this line, uh, logically, if I talk about my equation that is CAPM model, I said my expected return is risk free return plus beta into RM minus RF. Okay, this is risk free return plus beta into RM minus RF. Now, logically think if this beta fact increases, so my expected return will also increase. If it becomes zero, if we talk about a risk free security. 
there is no beta beta is zero there so if the beta is zero then my return would be only risk free return only so if i plot that relationship on a chart you can see here so here on x axis what is happening what we can do so so if we plot what if i plot this that is risk free return plus beta into rm minus rf this is my capital asset pricing model so on x axis what we do we put beta so ri is return for a risky asset ri rf this is rf risk free ri is return on index no where here i am i am not writing ri some anywhere generally ri is equal to rf plus beta ha ri different different books can give you different i ri means return on security rm generally means return on market okay so ri generally means uh, return on security okay so on the x axis let i put beta on the y axis let i put what beta so what i am saying if beta number increases my return will increase and you can see this is a linear relationship because there is no such correlation and anything this is simply linear if i increase this number it will increase linearly if it becomes zero risk free assets have beta equals to zero remember this risk free securities have beta equals to zero market has beta of 1 aggressive securities have beta greater than 1 defensive securities have beta less than 1 okay so if i plot it my line would be this so if i plot this capm on a graph so this line is called as security market line sml this line is called as security market line so it means if beta is this much how much return i should how much return is expected this much return is expected if the beta is this much then this much return is expected logically think if beta is higher it means risk is higher if risk is higher your expectation for the return would be higher so you can see it is going up and up and up i hope this point is clear to everyone sarthak is it done yes sir shanay yes yes okay now for example if the expected return is this and the actual return is is this expected return is this actual return is this so it means 
this security is overvalued. My expected return is this, but this is the actual return. It means security was overvalued. That is why the return was less. If my expected return is this, but actual return is this. It means this, this was underpriced. So if this is my expected return, this is my actual. If this is the situation, then what it is, it is overpriced. If this is the situation, then this is underpriced. And now again, let me do some analysis here. So if we find out the slope of this line, this is what this is risk free return. So for example, this is risk free return. So if I find out slope for, for example, this point, slope of this point, how can we find out the slope? Slope, I can find out risk return on this return minus risk free return because this is risk free return divided by what beta. So the slope of this security market line is this and we call it as trainer ratio. We call it as trainer ratio. Okay. What is it called? Trainer ratio. Trainer. T R E Y N O R. So logically, think higher the ratio, better it is. Higher the ratio, better it is. Because it means for one unit of beta, we are getting more and more risk premium. So logically think at one place, my trainer ratio is two at one place. My trainer ratio is 2.5. It means for one unit of systematic risk, I am getting risk premium of two. What do we mean by 2.5 for one unit of systematic risk? I am getting risk premium of 2.5. So logically think where I am getting the higher risk premium per unit that is better. So higher trainer ratio, better it is. Is it fine? Okay. Now, now let me move. I said, if I take the difference, if I take the difference between expected return or if I take the difference between actual return and the expected return, If I take the difference between actual return and expected return, we call it as Jensen Alpha. If we take the difference between actual return and expected return, we call it as Jensen Alpha. So logically think actual return, let us say RI is the actual return. And how can we calculate the expected return? This is through CAPM model only. So what is the CAPM model? That is risk-free return plus beta into RM minus RF. So it gives me what? It gives me Jensen L. So actual return minus expected return, we can calculate through CAPM Jensen Alpha. Logically think, higher the Jensen Alpha, better it is. 
जितना ज्यादा जेंसन अल्फा है इसका मतलब जितना हमने एक्सपेक्ट किया था उससे उतनी ज्यादा रिटर्न है इफ जेंसन अल्फा इज नेगेटिव इट मींस व्हाट इट मींस जितना हमने एक्सपेक्ट किया था उतनी रिटर्न नहीं आई सो इफ वी टेक द डिफरेंस बिटवीन व्हाट if we take the difference between expected and actual so here what will happen it will be negative my jensen alpha will be negative if i am getting my return which is lying below this security market line it means what is happening my jensen alpha is negative if i am getting my jensen alpha if i am getting my return here above the security market line so my actual return is greater than the expected return so it is what it is positive jensen alpha please kya ye point clear hota hai is it fine Siddhi, is it done? Yes, sir. Just can you again explain the trainer ratio? See, trainer ratio is nothing but slope of the security market line. What does it tells us that for one unit of systematic risk, beta is a measure of systematic risk. For one unit of systematic risk, how much risk premium we are earning? See, I can calculate risk premium. i can calculate risk premium here here also here also but i cannot compare it in absolute numbers mujhe kya dekhna chahiye main kehta hu ek jagah risk premium 2% 2% hai ek jagah risk premium 3% hai to main definitely kahunga ye hai lekin main kehta hu ki yahan par 2% ke risk premium ke liye hame kitna systematic risk lena pada tha hame 1 1 ka systematic risk lena pada tha yahan par hame 3% का रिस्क प्रीमियम अर्न करने के लिए 2 का सिस्टमेटिक 2 2 इतना रिस्क लेना पड़ रहा है तो लॉजिकली देखिए पर यूनिट अगर मैं रिटर्न को आ, पर यूनिट रिटर्न को कंपैरिजन करूं तो डेफिनेटली ये सिचुएशन ये सिचुएशन थोड़ी कम बेटर है ये वाली सिचुएशन ज्यादा बेटर है ना तो यही right. हमारी ट्रेनर रेशियो ओके ओके गॉट इट गॉट इट Yeah, if yeah. we okay. talk about the if we talk about the efficient frontier so there what was happening here i was putting standard deviation total risk on x axis we were putting return so if we calculate slope slope of what slope of this so we get what we get a ratio called sharp ratio get a ratio called sharp ratio so what is that sharp ratio if i see i am saying slope here so here my x axis is standard deviation so return minus risk free return divided by what divided by standard deviation return minus risk free return divided by standard deviation it will give me what it will give me sharp ratio it means for one unit of total risk in trainer ratio what was happening for one unit of systematic risk how much risk premium we are getting here we are saying for one unit of total risk how much risk premium we are earning so that is what that is sharp ratio again higher the ratio better it is so what is the difference between sharp ratio and trainer ratio like ha huh, here we are comparing this risk premium with the total risk standard deviation here we are comparing this risk premium with only the systematic risk hum keh rahe hain ek unit systematic risk lene se kitna additional risk premium hum earn kar pate hain ek unit systematic risk ke liye kitna risk premium yahan par hum keh rahe hain ek unit total risk ke liye kitna risk premium क्योंकि दोनों यूज करते हैं 
लेकिन देर आर लॉट ऑफ पीपल लॉट ऑफ एनलिस्ट हु प्रेफर दिस ट्रेनर रेशियो मोर वो कहते हैं कि वाई शुड वी कंसिडर दिस स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन में तो क्या है स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन में तो सिस्टमेटिक और अनसिस्टमेटिक दोनों है यस yes. हम इस अनसिस्टमेटिक रिस्क को तो हटा सकते हैं ना बाय डाइवर्सिफाइंग द पोर्टफोलियो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ फंड इट मींस वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ डाइवर्सिफाइड पोर्टफोलियो तो ये कंपोनेंट तो हम हटा ही सकते हैं सो इट इज बेटर दैट आई ऑलवेज लुक फॉर दिस फॉर वन यूनिट ऑफ सिस्टमेटिक रिस्क हाउ मच रिस्क प्रीमियम वी आर अर्निंग सो दैट इज अगेन Uh, there are lot of analysts, lot of or most of we can say prefer this one. They say we should talk about this because whatsoever compensation we are getting, it is for this when we are talking about a portfolio. So whatsoever compensation we are getting, it is for this because we are talking about a portfolio. We are not talking about individual security because this risk can be eliminated. क्या ये point clear होता है, शनि? Okay. Okay. Great. So now let me see. Yes, please try all these questions. Please just tell me, is it done? No, sir. Calculating for. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Do it. Do it. Sir, I'm not getting first one. Okay, okay. Done. Okay. So I think we can see now. So please check your answers. Is it is it correct? जिन्होंने तीनों किए थे मेरा सेकंड वाला रॉन्ग है सेकंड वाला गलत है मैंने बी ए आंसर किया बीटा बीटा तो हमारा एसएमएल पर होता है ना कैपिटल एलोकेशन लाइन एफिशिएंट फ्रंटियर कैपिटल मार्केट लाइन तो वहां तो स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन होता है हां समझ रहे हैं तो आप इसको किस तरीके से याद रख सकते हैं देखिए जब मैंने एफिशिएंट फ्रंटियर की बात की तो सीएमएल सीएल सब यहीं पर ही निकल रही थी उसका मतलब वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टोटल रिस्क इज इट करेक्ट हां जी फर्स्ट क्यों नहीं निकला आपका सिद्धि एन इन्वेस्टर पुट 60% ऑफ हिज पोर्टफोलियो टू अ रिस्की एसेट ऑफरिंग 10% and uh, return of risk free is 5% so logically think think 60% so 0.60 into 10 plus rest of the money is invested where rest of the money is invested into the risk risk free one so risk free is 40% so 40 into 5 is it fine so this is how much this is 6 तो जो भी रिस्क है वो किस पे डिपेंड करता है वो डिपेंड करता है कितना risk, yes. हमने रिस्की में डाला है तो रिस्की एसेट की बात करते हैं तो रिस्की में हमने सिक्सटी परसेंट इन्वेस्ट किया है और रिस्की का स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन कितना है एट so it comes out as 4.8 that's it so we do not need any uh, correlation we do not need anything else got it sir yeah you got it okay yeah. sarthak aapke correct the teenon nahi sir mera pehla galat aaya ab correct ab ho gaya ha ha aap logo ko samajh aa rahi hai cheeze चलिए ठीक 
फिर आगे बढ़ते हैं और डू यू वॉन्ट अ ब्रिक नहीं मतलब कंटिन्यू करें वो चलेगा या ब्रेक चलेगा क्या ओके सो नाउ लेट वी टेक अ ब्रेक ओके एक्चुअल ब्रेक सो जस्ट मिनट आई थिंक लाइट इज कॉन जस्ट सो व्हाट वी डू लेट वी टेक अ ब्रेक फॉर टेन मिनट्स ओके फिफ्टीन मिनट्स ज्यादा So six ten is there. So let me be back by six twenty five. Okay.